Welcome to another episode of Eric Wait Whiskey Studies and in this video gonna do a review of the Douglas Lang Small Batch Big Beat Isla Blended Malt Scotch Whiskey. So this video is part of a series I'm doing on independent Isla uh, peated malt scotch whiskey. Some are uh, single malts and some are blended malts. This is a whiskey I'm sort of on the fence about, things I like about it, things I'm kind of eh about. But before I get into all that, let me tell you a little bit about this whiskey. Well, it's a blended malt from Isla, which means it is a blend of single malts from more than one distillery. And those distilleries are Ardbeg, Kalila, Bowmore, and Port Ellen. It's bottled by Douglas Lang. It's a non-age statement. It's non-chill filtered as natural color, bottled at 46% alcohol by volume, and sells for anywhere between $40 and $50. So first off, a few things that I liked about the whiskey. Number one, that it's non-chill filtered, has natural color. Price point eh, is not that bad, 40 to 50 bucks. Uh, I like the fact that they actually tell you who the distilleries are. Uh, and it's got a little bit of Port Ellen in it, which is surprising because Port Ellen is a closed distillery. Now, whether or not an independent bottler can tell you uh, what is going into the bottle in terms of who they source the whiskey from, that's going to depend on the relationship between the distillery and the independent bottler. So sometimes an independent bottler may want to tell you who they got the whiskey from, but the distillery doesn't want uh, any of their name on any products being sold out there that it, it totally depends on that relationship and sometimes they're gonna have a contractual uh, requirement not to reveal uh, where the spirit came from of course we like the fact that it is non geo filtered and has uh, no added coloring it doesn't need the coloring and we don't want anything removed from it in terms of uh, filtering you don't want to lose any of those oils it's at the sort of uh, the baseline in terms of where you wouldn't want to uh, remove uh, any uh, oils or anything from you wouldn't want to do any chill filtering at 46% alcohol by volume on the nose is clean I get tropical fruits get some apple get some pear it does come across as youthful I get a little bit of a sort of powdered sugar note if you ever open up a box of powdered sugar or you have some pastries that have powdered sugar on you can smell that powdered sugar note I get a little bit of that uh, I also get of uh, an artificial sugar you know, like uh, aspartame, aspartame, what, however you want to pr uh, pronounce it, uh, saccharin sort of smell to it. It's not overwhelming, it's not bad, but there is a little bit of it there. And then, of course, as the name says, you got a buttload of peat, a lot, a lot, a lot of peat. Now, the thing is, I've been doing a lot of peated whiskeys. Uh, this is part of a series. I'm doing a lot of peated whiskeys, and it, over time, you can become less and less sensitive to the peat, which on the positive side, you get more of the fruit notes. The peat is going to lay more in the background. You're gonna, not going to note as much. It's not an immunity to peat. You just become more acclimated. You get become acclimated uh, to the peat versus coming off a long series on Irish whiskey, non-peated Irish whiskey, or some other, or sherried whiskeys, or some other type of or bourbons. Coming off some other type of whiskey, the first peated whiskeys you do, they seem much more intense. But this is a big snout full of smoke and peat. I would say the smoke character is similar to Ardbeg. Obviously, we know a little bit about Ardbeg in there. Uh, it just doesn't have like the iodine notes. It doesn't have the medicinal notes. It's more of a campfire smoke. It does have a little bit of the Ardbeg clay mud sort of character to it. The fruit side is more tropical, maybe a little bit of pineapple, but it's got the apple and pear going on there as well. And there's just a hint of a nuttiness and even on the nose, smell a little bit of milk chocolate. All right, on the palate. It is super sweet from the front and into the middle. Dries a little bit towards the back. Start off with a big kapow of peat and smoke up front. That powdered sugar saccharin character uh, kicks in about the mid palate. That powdered sugar saccharin character is because it is a younger whiskey. Um, 
on the down, that's, now if you like those notes, then you like those notes. And there's nothing wrong with liking those notes. Some people like the way a younger whiskey has those character. It doesn't offend me, but it's not something I'm in love with. It's not something that, hey, I like that character in that whiskey and I'm gonna buy it. So overall, it doesn't throw me off the whiskey. It's just like something, huh? Eh, not real big on those particular characteristics. I like the fact that it has a little bit of nuttiness and the smoke carries all the way through. These fruity characteristics, which come from fermentation, uh, fruit characteristics are either gonna come from fermentation or they're gonna come from a cask. These are coming from uh, fermentation. It's not fighting with the smoke and peat. Uh, and I'm not having to push through the smoke and peat in order to get fruity character. They're sort of well integrated, particularly you know, I've gotten past the neck, neck bar, I've gotten past the shoulder. In fact, I'm actually below the halfway point. I've been really enjoying this whiskey with some chocolate. Chocolate with peated whiskey will cover up the youthful notes. Uh, you'll get just mostly the fruit and the smoke and the peat, uh, that, and so it'll go really well with chocolate. Now, the chocolate does a really good job of masking some of the youth notes. This is true about food and wine pairing as well. There are wines that are sort of okay by themselves, but when you have them with food, they taste a lot better. Uh, the food can make the wine taste better, and the wine will make the food taste better. Same thing can happen with a more youthful peated whiskey. You have them with some chocolate, and the youthfulness sort of goes away uh, on the nose and the palate. Um, so on the back end, I get more tropical notes, and what lingers is a, a, a smoky note. So what I like about it is, I like the fruit character, I like the tropical, I like I like the apple. Uh, I like that it isn't ashy, ashiness in, in a peated whiskey doesn't offend me, but it's not my favorite characteristic. I prefer more heavier onto the uh, barbecue side. Uh, this is more of a campfire. So I would put a um, barbecue campfire and you have the ashiness. I would rather have more barbecue uh, and less ashiness. What I have soda in the middle is just sort of that campfire characteristic. Uh, the fruit shines all the way through. It has a nice development. It has a nice mouthfeel. Uh, you could put it on ice, it'll do fine. Um, the fruit characteristic will pop just a little bit more, um, but it doesn't necessarily enhance it. You can add a little bit of water. I didn't find it necessarily improved anything. So at 46%, it does fine really, really, really neat. So price-wise, okay, we're talking 40 to 50 bucks. Uh, some of my favorite uh, bottles now, Ardbeg 10, I've jumped up another five to 10 bucks. Ardbeg 10 is a whiskey I sort of use as a baseline in comparison for quality and price uh, ratios, and I'm noticing it's gone up another five to 10 bucks. The fact that this is 40 to 50 bucks you know, it gets a little bit more into a bargain range of whiskey. So I, I like that. Now, just based on the aromas and flavors, uh, I'm going to go with a solid 88 points. What would I want to get it higher? I'd want more time. I want more age. Uh, I would like it to uh, not have those saccharin powdered sugar notes. Uh, and I'd like some more richness. Uh, I really like the Port Allen 110 uh, over this. Um, it was richer, it had more development, and had more depth than this. This is a little bit too much on uh, the newbie side, uh, too much youthfulness on it. Uh, I like them a little uh, older. I know others, such as Bart, over at uh, Scotch Test Emmys, he likes the youthful, you know, he likes the on the young side, uh, and he likes the big smack upside head of Pete, which I do as well. I just not real big on those sack and characteristics. So, uh, would I recommend the whiskey? It all depends on what you like and whether or not you like those youthful notes. If you like those youthful notes at this price point, hey, this is a real bargain in today's market, unfortunately, which is going up and up and up, uh, it's a good buy. Uh, it's well-balanced, it's well-developed, it's a well-crafted uh, whiskey. Alrighty, uh, that's it for this review. If you subscribe to this channel, I want to thank you very much. If you've not yet subscribed, but you like watching my other videos, I want to ask that you subscribe, ring the bell to be notified when I go live or post a new video. And if you're one of my patrons, I want to thank you very much for supporting this channel. And until next time, cheers.
Hey, don't forget to subscribe and check out these other whiskey videos.